Okay, so today we're going to look at solving some systems of equations by graphing. So warm up wise, since we're going to be graphing some quadratic equations, you do need to remember how to find the vertex of them. So to find the vertex of a quadratic that's in standard form, you could do, whoop, not y, x equals negative b over 2a. And if you plug in 2 and 1 on this one, you'll end up with an x coordinate of negative 1. And then plug that negative 1 back in to get your y value. And you're going to end up with 3. So the vertex of that quadratic is negative 1, 3. All right, so systems of equations. We're going to look at linear equations and quadratic equations today. So a system of either type of equations um, consists of at least two equations. And to have a solution to your system, it needs to be an ordered pair that makes both of your equations true at the same time. So if you have a point that you think works, it's going to have to be plugged into both equations and satisfy them both at once. So for example, a uh, system of linear equations, be your variable x to the first power. So something like x plus y equals 2 and 2x plus 2y equals 4. If you have a point that you think is a solution to your system, say 1, 1. If you plug it into the first equation, 1 plus 1 is 2. Plug into the second equation, 2 plus 2 equals 4. So it does make both of your equations true, so it would be a solution. A system of quadratic equations is going to have your variable raised to the second power. So something like this would look like a system of quadratic equations. There are three different types of systems. Uh, the first kind you can have is called a consistent and independent system. So that means when you actually go to solve it, you do have one or more solutions to your system of equations. Your lines intersect in one, two, three, four, some finite number of points. So consistent means there is a solution. Independent means there's a set of distinct solutions. Consistent and dependent, again, has a solution, except uh, this time your equations are equivalent. They're really like the same function. So if you were to graph them, they're going to just lie right on top of one another and share all of their points. For example, the two I did earlier uh, would be a system of consistent and dependent equations because that second e or that first equation is really equivalent to what I'd have if I multiplied my second one by two. So that'd be consistent and dependent. The last kind you can have is inconsistent. If you have an inconsistent system, your lines are never going to intersect. That means there's no possible way to get a point that makes both of them true at the same time. There's no solution. Let's look at a situation here. So Softball League offers two options for membership. Uh, option A costs you $40 to join and then 5 bucks for each game you play. Option B is $10 for every game you play, but no like fee to join. So let's write some equations. Uh, option A, we'll say C for cost, is equal to $40 to join plus 5 times, if I let X be the number of games, plus 5X. Option B, um, this time it doesn't cost anything to join, so cost is just $10 for every game that I play, so 10x. I want to know after how many games is the total cost going to be the same. So let's do a little bit of graphing our two equations here. If you think of cost as your output, you could think of it like y equals 40 plus 5x and then use slope and y-intercept. So I'm going to count by tens on my y-axis. And if I graph option A, y-intercept is 40. $5 per game. So if I count by like ones on my x-axis, let's label here for my number of games. Labeling your axis is always good. This represents my cost on my y-axis. So after one game, it costs $40 to $5 and option A, two games, $50. This may not have been the best choice in a scale here, but we're going with it. If I graph my second option, option B, it's $10 for every game I play, so nothing to join, and then $10 for one game, $20 for two games, and so on. 
this kind of demonstrates one of the limitations of solving by graphing is you actually have to graph enough to see where your lines intersect at and you can't always necessarily 100% tell where your point of intersection is. So we might have to check using some algebra here. It looks like maybe after eight games, these two lines are gonna represent the same cost, but let's plug in eight to actually check and see. So if you plug eight games in to see if our cost is equivalent, option A, we'd have 40 plus five times eight, would get us $80 for our total cost. Option B, just be cost equals 10 times the eight games that we played would also give us $80. So the cost will be the same after eight games. It'll be $80 in both of our league options. Especially if you're dealing with lines where you can't tell where they intersect exactly, you may need to plug in your potential solutions and make sure that it does satisfy both equations. All right, let's look at some other kinds of systems. So some quadratic ones now, that was linear. We're gonna solve and classify. Okay, so looking at our quadratic system of equations, we're gonna always want to find our vertex first when we graph our quadratics. So just like the warm up, x equals negative b over 2a, since that one's in standard form. Get us x value of two and a y value, if you were to plug it back in, of negative one. So two negative one for your vertex. We'll need some additional points. So pick some x's close to our vertex. Let's go with zero and one. Plug them back in. You'll end up with three and zero. So if we come over to our graph and graph that first quadratic, it's gonna look something like this. Draw on our axis of symmetry and our new points here. I hate drawing quadratics. Always so hard to make look nice. We need our second one drawn as well, so we can see if they share any points for our solution to our system. It's in vertex form, so it's translated right to and up one. So our vertex is at two, one. Additional points, let's go with something close to our vertex, zero and one again. Zero gets you negative three, one gets you zero. So let's graph that one. If you look, you can see that our two parabolas are gonna intersect at the points one, zero and three, zero. So those two ordered pairs should be solutions to our systems of equations. That one was nice. We could tell that they intersected exactly there. Uh, one zero is even a point that's in both of our tables. So those two are solutions. Classifying. So since it had a solution, it's gonna be a consistent system. And specifically, since it had a fixed number of solutions, couple of specific points of solution. It's going to be consistent and independent. All right, that was a quadratic system. Let's take a look at another linear system. So if you were to put these equations in slope intercept form, it would make your life a little bit easier. So if you were to subtract 6x and divide by negative 2, you're gonna end up with just y equals 3x minus four. Other one, you could subtract 3x, divide by negative one. You'll also end up with y equals 3x minus four. So hey, those are actually the same line. So if they're the same line, I'm gonna go ahead and graph them. So if they're the same line, using slope intercept form, um, y intercepts at negative four, and then your slope's three, so up three, right one. There's my first line. If I graph my second line, it's gonna be right on top of that first one. So they share every single point and any ordered pair that is on that line is going to be a solution to my system of equations. It does have to be a point that's on that line and has that relationship where the y value is three times your x value minus four. So like just any random points, not gonna be a solution. 
So to write what my solution is, I'm going to say that any point on the line y equals 3x minus 4 is going to be a solution to that system. If it's on the first line, it's going to be on the second line because they're really the same line. Classifying, it's consistent and this time dependent. All right, one more quadratic system. So using our, again, quadratic graphing skills, standard form, we could do x equals negative b over 2a for your vertex. And if you do that on this one, you're going to get uh, 1 for your x-coordinate and 0 for your y-coordinate. Vertex is 1, 0. Additional points, um, x values, let's go 0 and negative 1, gets us 1 and 4. If I look at my graph, just got a nice little quadratic sitting on the x-axis. Okay, so... Whoop. My line doesn't go through my vertex. There we go. Let's do our second one. It is in vertex form. It's translated left 1, not up or down at all. So vertex is negative 1, 0. Get some additional points here. So if you go to graph it, look at where we're going to be here. It's reflected over the x-axis from that negative out in front, so it's opening down. And it actually is never going to meet my first parabola that I graphed. So they don't have any points in common. There's no way I can put an x value and a y value in my first equation and have that same x and y value work in my second equation. Therefore, it is going to be no solution to the system of equations. And that means it's an inconsistent system. So a little graphing some systems of equations. Good luck.